So RoboCup started uh, in Japan, I mean, with a group of Yoraki Kitano, Minoru Asada in Japan and Itsuki Noda, so three people in Japan, and then several uh, international faculty, and it was Dominique Duho from France, uh, Silvia Coradacci from Sweden, uh, Enrico Pagelli from Italy, and myself from the US. So it's really the seven people who started this RoboCup. And it started very simply as just, okay, let's do some competition. In those days, there were not really robot competitions, and we thought, let's do some competition. And then robot soccer came up as something actually that would be of interest to the whole world. So RoboCup started small, which is small size league, middle size, and simulation. Even those days, we were about like all together, 30 teams of simulation and uh, together in the robots, about like 12 teams. So it was very small. Now, RoboCup International, we have to limit how many people come here. So every league has at most 24 teams. Some of them have 20 and therefore other leagues can go up to 30. But basically, it's a very uh, well-defined size and we have up to 3,000 people with RoboCup Junior uh, coming uh, as participants and then thousands of people as actually audience that comes to just see these competitions. So, and everybody's trying to improve. We publish all the results we have done. So everybody can see how, how did Carnegie Mellon do all the passes? There you go. How did uh, Be Human did their walk? There we go. So there are publications in the symposium and everywhere else. And so people can build upon what was done before. Well, I think RoboCup started at the right time because there was uh, all over science this uh, uh, idea that competition would push uh, science forward. But in addition to that, uh, RoboCup had this uh, intuition that soccer is the right uh, challenge in order to push forward uh, artificial intelligence and robotics. There has been uh, a strong effort to connect uh, the results of the scientific developments on the soccer into application domains. We started with RoboCup Rescue, and then we moved on with RoboCup at home, and now here we have uh, industry involved with the number of industrial tasks that are undertaken by the robots. Within each of the leagues in RoboCup, there's been different sort of evolutions. Um, and and I, I like to say that often, you know, in, in any given year, um, at least uh, you know, two or three of the leagues, there's sort of a quantum jump that, that you know, the, the performance of the teams, are, they're showing something that they never would, you never would have seen the year before. And then typically, the next two or three years in that league, a lot of the other teams sort of catch up to the, the team that won. Um, sometimes that's because of a new technology or a new technique. Sometimes that's because of a rule change. Um, so for instance, this year in the standard platform league, there's a black and white ball instead of an orange ball. It's causing teams a lot of problems. Um, by next year, probably, a lot of the teams will have caught up and, and sort of figured out how to do that. And so there'll be a general you know, jump in performance. And then there'll be a new rule change and you move to a bigger field or take away some of the markers. And, and that, you know, that's true in, in at home. They always, uh, there's, you know, there's new challenges. Um, in rescue, there's new arenas. Every league sort of evolves and has its own story of how it's evolved over the years. That, that's not easy to, you know, sort of um, to capture in a single, uh, single phrase from all the different kinds of soccer are doing different kinds of research towards the goal of 2050 of having a team of robots that can beat the FIFA World Champions in a fair and practical game. So we're looking at lots of game strategy because of where we are. Um, where other fields are looking at because they've got wheels instead of legs, they're not worrying about the locomotion of how to walk to the ball, so they're looking at different parts of the whole problem. And the idea is eventually all these different leagues will come together, we'll have one humanoid robot that then can win the World Cup. We have the soccer leagues, simulation, small size, middle size, standard platform, and humanoids. The, the really exciting, uh, exciting thing about the soccer league is that everybody understands it. So everybody can, can watch a game and see, okay, that's how, uh, how well robots perform now. And so, um, it's, it's easy to compare this with how uh, good humans uh, play soccer. With RoboCup at home, the idea was not to have uh, robots doing a complex task in a simplified environment, but to have, have a robot starting with a simple task in a complex environment. So uh, we're Team Tech United, we participate in the RoboCup at home league. And this league is about robots doing a course in a household, obviously. A robot has to be able to do a lot of things in a household. So 
Today we already tested the navigation skills, the speech recognition skills, uh, the person recognition skills, and tomorrow, tomorrow we will proceed by uh, object recognition, object manipulation, following a person through an unknown space. So we will guide the robot actually throughout the whole venue and then it must be able to find its way back on its own. In the future, I think it's really useful to have these robots in the real world. Although it will take some time uh, until they're at the level that they're actually useful. And now we have to teach them the environment, teach them the objects, teach them the people. And that all takes quite some time and it's still only able to do a limited uh, number of tasks. But uh, once we get further in, uh, in these developments, it will definitely be useful to have one of these at home. RoboCup Junior has a soccer league and a rescue league. It's the same as Major. And then also we have something called CoSpace, which is a competition that uses a simulation, but also a real robot to do communication and, and a competition with robots. But also we have something called on stage, which is the stage performance, but also there are some tasks that they have to do. A RoboCup Junior is an educational initiative to get young people involved in robotics, to give them a challenge. It's about learning. It's about taking them on a learning path, an educational path, where they increase their knowledge, their understanding, and particularly it's about sharing knowledge and, and growing by learning. So it's a, it's a particularly, it is about uh, taking a journey. It is not just about coming and winning the prizes. That's not where we want to see these people, the, the young people being. Um, in Robocop Junior, we want to see it as a learning experience um, in which they're all sharing together and they're meeting people from all around the world. And I think that, to me, that is the most amazing opportunities that these children have had here is, is working with children from other 30 or different countries. Uh, and they're all the same as each other. They're all talking, they're all learning, and they're all sharing about robotics, about technology, about science and that is my passion. That's what I'm trying to get them to do. It's very interesting. You, you, you're doing something that, that you see the results and it's uh, exciting and, uh, and it's fun. Like. Uh, the goal of the Rescue League is to develop robots that can enter um, areas that have been hit by a disaster and to search for uh, survivors. So the robots have to be able to move around very complicated areas with a lot of obstacles map the area so that they can then go back to the human rescuers to report um, what the environment is like and what the, the state of the victims is like. Um, increase, it gets increasingly complicated every year. So when it started, it was fairly simple um, and the robots obviously couldn't handle even fairly simple terrain. And each year it gets more and more complicated. Uh, we're coming here uh, to get experience uh, from the old ones and uh, uh, communicate with uh, the other teams and get experience from them. And uh, we can do so many things that we have learned uh, from the um, university, our uh, measure, and uh, do it uh, real, um, like real things. Stuff like go in, letting go, robots go over rubble, have them open doors sense the environment, find victims, stuff like that. This is all meant to be simulated in the RoboCup Rescue League. Now, uh, in the rescue simulation, there is a city, typically a big city, with roads and buildings, and uh, a disaster, usually an earthquake happens. What we try to do is we want to recover trapped people on the, from the debris and uh, take them to hospital and put out the fires. Uh, RoboCup at the industry is a new league. Uh, under this league, there is a RoboCup logistics, the RoboCup at work. Uh, this is a really industry inspired scenario. We, as RoboCup Federation, work closely with industry to set up this industry inspired scenarios. Um, in the RoboCup at Work League, we are focused on um, manufacturing industrial uh, robots. So we try to do, uh, invent autonomous uh, manufacturing robots. The challenges we have in the League are basic uh, navigation tasks, where you show that your uh, robots can autonomous navigate uh, from several distinct points in the arena to other distinct points, detecting um, walls, uh, moving objects, and also just um, invisible um, barriers that just mark with um, barrier tapes. So the same, um, it, it should interact in normal workshops 
bare humans also interact with. So if a human can see a danger tape on the ground, the robot should also see it. So it doesn't need to tell where it is. Then there are manipulation tasks, basic manipulation tasks, where just perform basic manipulation of objects like grasping, turning, uh, putting away some stuff. And um, but so um, the robot never knows where the object is exactly. Just uh, he get just a um, short task. Uh, drive to this surface and some of over this table or in this uh, shelf, uh, there you will find the object. And the robots that we present here are tackling exactly this problem. So the idea there is that the robots take work pieces from machine to machine and at each machine the product is refined until you can finally deliver it. And the challenge here is particularly focused on the task planning and reasoning aspects. So what should the robots do? When should they do it? And also coordination so that robots don't interfere with each other and they have an effective distribution of the workload over the whole world of fleet. I think definitely my favorite thing about robotics is that it's always the cutting edge these days. You know, robots have only been around the last 40, 50 years. And that's because we're finally getting our electronics, our mechanics, and our software to come together. So whenever it comes to robotics, it always feels like the cutting edge, and it always feels like we're really doing the best we can with our engineering. Yeah, we're on the cutting edge, and it's a really, really hard problem to you know, even get a robot to see a soccer ball, let alone do things around the house, pick up rubbish, etc. And being able to work on those really hard problems and then see them applied in a real world, in a situation that's going to be useful to someone, that feeling is just fantastic. You get to see, like, this is the future. We're helping build the future.